Okay, guys, welcome to the dev stream 53 and no, uh, notes overview. Uh, today, the stream was pretty good. It's been better than it has been in the past, I and mean, we got shown a lot of stuff, although we didn't get shown the stuff that I think was the most important and that I thought we were waiting a week to get, which was the solar map rework stuff. Uh, we got a lot of bullet points, which is improved world building, mission modifiers, reduced junk, but they didn't really show like any concepting or anything like important as for like showing the visual representation of what the map is going to be like or what like the limitations are going to be <clears throat> but speaking of limitations they did say that they don't want to limit what players are able to go and farm and do so i'm hoping that it doesn't go terribly but if it does go terribly i think that we can rely on the community to tell them that it's awful i mean I hope so. Uh, but stuff that we did get information on starts after the solar map rework stuff here in my notes. Uh, the Kubro stuff, uh, there's going to be a cat version of Kubros, which are these. Uh, this is the multiple skin feather patterns that uh, were shown. And they showed what the feral ones look like and what the uh, Grenier ones look like, but they're not much different. The Grenier one is just uh, featherless. <clears throat> and they're not uh, too different or too crazy. So apparently we're getting the cat version of Kubros, which, hooray, that's exciting. I don't think Kubros are where they need to be right now. I don't think they are useful enough to warrant their cost uh, compared to Sentinels. But that's just me. I know for a lot of people who are cat people instead of dog people, this is going to be very exciting. So it is worth noting. And then another, or the other thing, actually I actually have this as well. This is what the Grenier handler for the uh, cat bros, they're still unnamed, uh, is going to look like, which they basically described as a crazy cat lady, which is about reasonable. <clears throat> and then they also showed off one concept for the Kubro armor, which is probably just going to be cosmetic. Uh, I don't imagine that it's going to have anything other than cosmetic effect. And it does look alright. I don't much care for the helmet, but uh, I like the chest armor. It's pretty alright there. And that's about all we heard in terms of the Kubro stuff, except for the new improvements to the Genetic Foundry are coming in Update 17. We got that reconfirmed. But one of the big things that they showed that I'm very, very excited for, which you might have noticed, is the Pre-Corpus Valkyr skin, which looks like this. Or this is the concept for it, anyway, I should say. And as someone who really, really likes Valkyr as, like, a concept for frame and powers, I think this is really cool, and this is just, I'm just going to buy it. That, like, for me, like, I think Valkyrie is one of the cooler Warframes, and, um, like, that's just me. So, it's worth noting that she's going to be the next special skin. Like, we had the Nyx Nemesis skin, and Excal, of course, has his anniversary, um, um, proto armor. And this is going to be the next one of those, except for I don't think it's going to have to be required to be on an anniversary in order to come out. I think it's just going to come out when it's done. Uh, I'm really excited for it. And pre-corpus torture, Valkyr looks fucking great. Like, that's... It looks awesome to me. Uh, I don't know what to say besides that. Uh, and then in other news, with Parkour 2.0, all the stuff that they showed in the last dev stream is basically gone. Um, they said that, like... well, And they showed a little bit of it. Uh, the, the concepting for it has changed. Instead of it being, like, held on the wall like running along the geometry and most of the maps doesn't support that and I agree with that statement because the most of the geometry doesn't support that and what they found after just watching people play is that you do a lot of boosts like you do boosts along the ground and you touch a wall for one second and then you bounce off because that gives you the most momentum and the most like speed so they showed some stuff that uh, incorporates constantly building up speed by jumping from wall to wall or sitting on the same wall and then they also showed up a uh, really interesting concept, which is enemy hopping, where you will like bounce off of a wall, gain speed, and then go into sort of like a tackle state, where you would like hit an enemy and then get a choice of going any direction, like bouncing back and throwing them to the ground, or like you like throwing them to the side and getting momentum off them to go forward, going straight up, uh, and all kinds of things like that. So that stuff looks great. I think that the like last time. Whenever we saw Parkour 2.0, I was really, really excited because they were all really good changes. These changes are changes that I didn't even know that I needed. 
because based on like the very few limited animations I was shown, or we were shown, I suppose, um, it looks like they're trying to incorporate what players are already doing and making it more accessible for the vast majority of players, which is awesome. I think that's great. Uh, also, a uh, point that they touched between this and the next thing I'm going to talk about is new augments for weapons and warframes. Uh, I this th Having it in a video, I have the image, but it's a lot of text because it's a spreadsheet. So that's going to be down in the description if you want to see a lot of the new augment ideas that they have floating around and like stuff that could go into new augments for weapons and warframes. Uh, that stuff is in the description. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, uh, stamina changes. Now these are the things that I'm very excited about because for a long time, and like for a long time, I hate stamina. I think it, I don't know why it exists in the game because it has never made any sense to me whatsoever. So they have been experimenting on their dev build with this new like movement type, just having no stamina. And they all seem completely in agreement that it's like, this is just better. Which, as someone who's been saying that for a long time, that's awesome. Like, I've been saying for the, like, so, uh, whatever. What I've been saying doesn't matter. What they're saying is that they've been experimenting with no stamina, and it seemed like they were all in agreeance, agree, agreement that they all liked it. Which is great. Which would mean no stamina in Arcwing, which means you're not going to run out of gas or whatever. And then, um... They said, uh, also, in terms of the stamina changes and stuff, uh, they mentioned it a couple times over and over, is that coptering is going to see changes. And right now, um, <clears throat> this is something I talked about a little bit uh, in the comment section on my melee analysis overview. Um, I don't like coptering. I think that the glitchy, weird, and like animationless, basically, movement of it in midair whenever you're doing it correctly, whenever you're going, like as they said on the stream, like 30 meters per second, just flinging yourself across the map at like like absurd speeds. Like it's not good, like in a single player sense, like sure, if you're all by yourself. But if you're with someone that has a galatine, because that's what their weapon choice is, like that's what they want to use. They, they're a galatine user, because they like that weapon. The galatine doesn't copter well. Some weapons copter well. There's a huge disparity between air dashing and coptering. Because air dashing, I think, is balanced between the different weapon types. That where, like, it's different for all of them, and they all have their merits. But none of them are such a vast, like, difference that you would absolutely choose one weapon over all others because it's so fast. Like, even the difference between, let's say, the Orthos and the Galatine, you wouldn't do that. That's not going to happen. Like, if you want the damage of the Galatine, you're going to choose it. Because the Orthos isn't that much faster. You could still keep up with someone with an Orthos. Someone who's coptering, if you're not coptering, you can't it's, You can't keep up with them. Like, it's... It, like, someone coptering appropriately, you can't keep up with them unless you're doing the same thing. Which is pretty limited to a few weapons. And I hate that. Because if everyone could copter with, like, a Galatine or a Gram or... Like a glaive, oh, the glaives can sort of do it. But that's against the point, or besides the point, rather. Is that I definitely need to see changes to coptering just to keep the weapons on the same playing field. And it's why in my melee analysis video I didn't really talk about coptering as like a bullet point. Because they've been saying coptering is changing for since we've been talking about stamina and uh, parkour 2.0. And uh, to top that off. Scott said possibly the greatest thing that I think he could have possibly said, which is, I hate that fucking green bar. Because we all do. He brought up points that it's like, everyone rolls down their stamina down to the last little itty bitty little tick, and then you just pump that stamina, like hit and shift over and over, just to like get a little boost forward. And that's what you do. If you don't like, if you're not coptering and doing all kinds of weird shit that just makes it like stamina's not interacting with that situation. But I can talk about all that shit whenever it's done. Let's move on. Uh, we were shown for the first time the uh, full lotus body and what she looks like. So we have that. Uh, I think that she looks pretty good. I mean, it's fine. 
Uh, I think it's about what I expected, just considering we've seen her like upper torso, like you see of me now, uh, pretty often. Uh, but the more interesting thing that they showed is her throne, which looks like this. Uh, I'm really interested to see the design around the room that this thing is in, like if we do get to go there. Because I think that it's different from most, like even like even Arokan stuff doesn't really have like an aesthetic that looks like this. So it'll be really interesting to see um, if we get like a new zone or area to go to, or if it's part of like the raid or something like that, or a new raid or something along those lines. I think that'd be really neat. Uh, and then let's see here. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, Excal rework. Uh, we got shown the animations for that and the new alt and the new slash dash. So uh, the only things that are really new are the alt and slash dash because they've changed vastly. Uh, slash dash uh, is directional and incorporates a super jump like aspect to it in which you just look somewhere and just go. Like you don't have to like do the old slash dash where you're like, I'm going to go in this straight line direction. I'm going to go right there. You just pick a direction and go, and you just slash dash that way. And then when there are enemies in your path, you, uh, it's like they said, a mini Ash Blade Storm, where you give them a good slash, which incorporates your weapon's melee damage, which seems like, if the numbers back it up, could be amazing, and it looked really fun to do, but they were fighting level 10, like, butchers, so, with a grain of salt. Uh, the new alt uh, looks pretty good. Uh, I did not. We did not see if it's toggleable, but uh, it is an energy sword, and it incorporates some interesting things into its move set. Where the slide is a um, is a miniature like radial blind for enemies around you, and then radial blind on the move looks really really good. Uh, so we got to see a lot of that stuff, and it all looks like it works well in tandem with each other, but. It need, I need the numbers to back it up because if something can look really, really awesome, but if that like ultimate sword only does a hundred damage, it's gonna be bad. Like, and there's no way around that. So it has to have numbers to back up like the visual appeal of it in order to be any good. Because if Nova is four marked enemies and they all took half damage no one would use nova like as cool as that ability is like it's not useful anymore and so, like they have to make sure that they get the numbers behind the the visuals correct because like melee itself is a tad unbalanced as it is with the stamina changes i could see that changing though uh and then while they were showing the Excal rework, they accidentally showed the underwater arc wing because they slash dashed too far. Thank you, Rebecca, for doing that for us. Uh, and they uh, got underwater just the moment they hit the water, boom, they were in the arc wing underwater mode. Uh, and they showed the transition for getting in and out one right after the other. And it looks like even in like the very early dev build, it looks really fluid and potentially really fun and good, which is exciting for me as someone who doesn't like Arcwing by itself. I think it is lame by itself whenever that's all you're doing, but if you're doing that like partway through a level, it's a good way to break up the action between um, between encounters with enemies on the ground and underwater. It would be more fun to do that. Uh, and then the last thing that we had Oh, and I forgot to show this stuff. Uh, Excal's new alternate uh, alternate helmet, and uh, that looks pretty neat. I don't think it's as good as his Pendragon helmet, which is my favorite. But and we uh, also have his ultimate sword, which we have the in-game render and the concept art for that. So I think it looks pretty good overall. Uh, nothing too exciting there. Uh, and then we have at the end here a slideshow for a bunch of weapon changes. Uh, this is the new Burstin. It is looking pretty good. These are the new Dark Swords. Uh, this is going to be the visual change for the Dark Dagger and the Dark Sword. And then these are the Tyler Rigor Fists in Arcwing. I don't know why I put these on a slideshow because they're going by really, really fast. But uh, pause if you need to, I suppose. I tried out the slideshow. Maybe it wasn't the best choice. Uh, but I think the, uh, the Dark Swords look really cool. And I'm excited for those because uh, hopefully those together is really good because singularly they're not great and they're gonna have a, a new stance to go with the interlocking function 
of uh, the Dark Swords, as you can see in that concept image. But uh, I think that is everything that we covered. And I'm just going to throw my favorite thing back up a little bit. Yeah, look at that armor. It's so nice. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, it's been three weeks since the last stream, which is crazy. Uh, and again, I, I am shocked by the amount of like support and stuff that I get from the comments and like the actual discussion that goes on and like all of like the new people who have just gotten here in three weeks like it's over 300 people now and i still don't really know how i'm doing that but doing it and i love it. like that's great so uh thank you everybody and everyone who shares the video that helps me more than you can even imagine liking commenting watching like it's it's awesome and again, I just have to say thank you because I could do like none of it without all of the people that are here and watching this. Hopefully, hopefully that yeah, hopefully. Anyway, that is all I've got for DevStream 53. See you next time.